Thank you for tuning in to Macro View Television, and welcome to a brand new edition of Taiwan Outlook, the program that presents the different faces and lets you hear the different stories on Taiwan. I'm your host, Ray Guo. There are many outstanding overseas Taiwanese pianists who have returned to Taiwan in recent years. On today's program, we will get the opportunity to meet one of them. He is Lu Yizhi, who is currently a guest assistant professor at the National Taiwan University of the Arts, to share with us his experiences and stories studying in Europe for 12 years. Welcome to our program, Hi, Mr. Raymond. Lu. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Ichi Lu. I'm very happy to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on the program today, Mr. Lu. Yeah. Let me ask you a little bit. Can you please you know, elaborate a little bit about your own background and your you know, education process, please? Okay. Um, my father is a businessman and my mother is a, a Chinese teacher. Okay. So none of them are musicians. Okay. But my mother loves classical music. So. Good. During my most of the time lunch and dinner, okay. I listened to records and CDs. Okay. So that was the the beginning that I started to know what is classical music. Mm -hmm. uh, in the age of five, I attend to a music school called uh, Lin Rongde Ban. Okay. It's a, a, just a small school for kids, how they, they can learn some rhythmical things. Mm -hmm. And I start my piano lesson there. Okay. And afterwards, I go to Gu Ting uh, Elementary Music School. And that is something special because it's a elementary school which is specialized in music education. All the teachers come from university music department. Mm -hmm. So we can say that teacher, the faculty there is very strong. And I learned everything there. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. And let me ask you, when you started taking your first piano lessons at the age of five, mm -hmm. what was your reaction? You know, I mean, because other children maybe at the age of five were out there playing or going out with their parents. Uh, you probably have to go to school to study piano and maybe you have to spend some time after the piano lessons to practice. You know, what was the reaction? Did you, you know, were you happy with it or is it something that you kind of rebelled against it? Actually, not at all. I'm not, not happy all. with it. Oh, really? But it's just kind of homework. You just have to do them. Okay. So I tried my best to do all of my homework so mm. I can go to play outside or somewhere afterwards. All right. Uh, yeah, it, it takes a long, long time until I l start to like classical music. It, I think it was as I was 16 or 17, something okay. like that. So right. I just do this homework for a very long period, mm -hmm. but I don't, didn't hate it. No. So okay. I just yeah do it okay. more than 10 years. Like that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that, Mr. Liu, at the age of 16, 17, that you fell in love. Yeah. With classical music yeah, yeah. and therefore thereafter that at the age of 17 that you moved to Europe yeah. to studying in Austria and Germany mm -hmm. for over 12 years uh, can you tell us about your experiences studying in a land that's well known for the rich musical tradition but a land that you knew probably very little about before traveling there Tell us about your experience. Uh, okay, I studied in National Tainan University of the Arts oh, okay. when I was uh, 15. Uh -huh. It's a, a it's seven a year start. program okay. yeah, right. for uh, high school and university together. All right. So there I met my teacher. He's, his name is Albert Mühlberg. He's an Austrian. Austrian. So uh, I, I have some contact and I, I knew s very little things about Austria and mm -hmm. You know, in, in the classical music history, there are a lot of composers which is from Austria, from Germany, this uh, German-speaking area. Mm -hmm. So, well, Austria is already quite familiar for me. Okay. And Vienna is a music city. Of course. Yes, so we, we know more or less mm -hmm. about this. Okay. Uh, yeah, and at that time, um, Taiwan's uh, recruiting system is conscription. So everyone has to go to the military, except if we study abroad. Yes. So I don't want 
my musical study to be interrupted. So I started to find information, how can I go uh, abroad. outside, mm -hmm. abroad to mm -hmm. study. Yeah. Okay. And Vienna is my first, uh, state, uh, first okay. place where right. I go. But I would suppose that, Mr. Lu, when you first arrived in you know, Vienna, you probably knew very little German. Yeah. All right. That's the language that's spoken there. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did you adjust? I mean, the food was very different from the food in Taiwan also. Yeah, yeah, uh, how do you make the transition? Uh, first of all, it's, I studied a little German okay. in National College of the Arts because we have to set study the second language. Okay, so so it language. wasn't good. zero for me oh, to right. go there. <laughs> right. And I studied there. Of course, I, I went to a language course to study my German. But I have to say, uh, because music is an international language. Yeah, universal. Yes. Yeah, universal language. So what there is teaching, the, the, the thing, it's mm -hmm. the same, only the language is different. When we understand the thing, we just only have to learn the language. It's okay. in, in the music world, it's not mm -hmm. so difficult for okay. me. But All of right. course, speaking, we, we have to yeah, okay. uh, learn it. After completing your studies in Europe for 12 years, you came back to Taiwan, mm -hmm. and you fulfilled your military services obligations. But while you were in the military service, that you were playing the trombone. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you tell us what was the reason and the story behind the fact that you play trombone in the military? Oh, that's, that's just because my friend plays trombone there and they okay. said, oh, it's good, do you want to try? And say, okay, I'll try. Okay. So I tried trombone. Actually, I played trumpet as a minor instrument when I was uh, okay. in the elementary school. All right. And uh, the mouthpiece yes. is yeah, similar. Very similar. Yes. So I, can't, I can play trombone I can start it quite fast. All right. Yeah. And uh, what are the instruments other than you know piano and trombone and trumpet that you play also in addition to those three? Do uh, you play others? Yeah, but they are only hobby. Yeah, okay. And I, I really enjoy to play them, like orgo. Uh -huh. Okay. Orgo, I played it in uh, mm -hmm. Vienna. Mm -hmm. There's just a teacher. He just okay. in, in the university, and he asked me, "Do you want to learn?" I say, "Why not?" So <laughs> I learned two years, and Good. it's very. Very interesting because uh, piano we have one keyboard, organ we have two or three or four, and we have a long pedal. And at the beginning, I play like this. Okay, because it's <laughs> the head so is big. always yes. looking down on the pedal. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. I, I enjoy to play organ. So you very have much. a diverse interest in the different instruments that you play. Yeah, yeah. But also, Mr. Lu, I understand that after the military service. Uh, you decided to stay in Taiwan and not going back to Austria or Germany. What was the reason? Was it because of family, friends, teachers, or some other reasons? Mm -hmm. Can you share them with, you know, with us? Uh -huh. uh, as a musician, traveling is very important. Of course. So during my studying time, I mm -hmm. made a lot of competitions okay. in different countries. Yes. In one hand, it's good, but in the other hand, the the people there only know me for a very short period. So maybe after five or eight years, they forgot me. Okay. But the Taiwanese people never forgot me because okay. all these competitions, success, will come back to Taiwan. Of course. So I, I, I realized this, I very appreciate about this. So uh, I'm, I'm just thinking maybe I can contribute my music and all the other things I can. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I stay in Taiwan. Okay, yeah. and uh, you decided to stay in Taiwan, but this was after you have spent 12 years in Europe. It's a long time. You are a very young man, you know, still today, but back then you were even younger. Yeah. I mean, were there any adjustments that you have to, you know, you had to make? Uh, for example, in terms of how people interact, you know, in Taiwan, that is different from how people relate to each other in Europe? Uh, how about the foods, the customs, the culture? I mean, were there any adjustments that you have to make? Um, I think, in my case, uh -huh. as a pianist, we work alone at home. Okay. <laughs> right. So, and, and if we are a teacher, we work alone mm -hmm. with our students. So there, there is quite less teamwork or boss or, okay. or, or anything Cohorts else. Yeah, co-cooperation. Uh, there's not 
so big difficulty okay. in my job. But uh, I know in Taiwan, it's something is different. Just as uh, we have to do many other things, as a plain piano. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the final question for this part of the program is that, Mr. Liu, you travel still quite a bit, you know, regionally in Asia, also internationally to America, to Europe. And uh, how do you, you know, think about Taiwan's classical music industry? Is it well connected to the international industry at large? Is it, you know, for example, easy for Taiwanese pianists to be part of the you know, performing circuits you know, in other parts of the world, or the CD circulation exposure you know, internationally is something that's you know, readily available? I think Taiwan is always improving. All right, it's moving that yeah, direction. In okay. a good direction, in compared to my studying time okay. as I was 17 or 18, and now I, I, I feel the, the concerts, mm -hmm. activities, do have some big difference. The programs are much more interesting okay. as 20 years before. Okay. And the artists mm -hmm. are more international. Of course. The standard is higher. Good. And I think it's going in a positive way. All right. And yeah. your returning to Taiwan certainly is a big plus in that right direction. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Liu, like you said, since coming back to Taiwan and you decided to stay here, that you can, you, know, you must do more than one thing, all right? In addition to your teaching responsibilities, you travel to perform in different parts of the world, mm -hmm. and you also have been the recording studio yeah. you know, to have your CDs you know, produced. And uh, we understand that in the year of 2012, your CD, My Chopin, My, you know, up, you know Brahms, well, you know, you know, in the Golden Melody competition, uh, was given the award prize of the best interpretation of classical music. This is a very big honor, especially for somebody like you, who is well known internationally, and coming back to Taiwan and receiving this very distinguished honor. What did the honor mean to you? Oh, it means a lot uh, okay. because this CD is actually my first CD. Right. So I, I, I couldn't imagine how, how mm -hmm. could I be so lucky no. just with the first mm -hmm. CD and, and I, I just got a prize. Okay. Um, yeah, of course, mm -hmm. I got this prize. After that, it means for me a lot, but maybe okay. not in CD selling, okay. but more in the, in the reputation. All right. So the people knows me more, mm -hmm. and if I go to somewhere and someone needs to introduce me, and they okay. just say, "Oh, this guy wants the gold melody award," <laughs> and the 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 re reaction will be totally under, "Oh, okay, this guy might be good." So All right. yeah, this is something that people can easily identify. You know, mm -hmm. you easily identify you, and also recognize your music. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me ask you this though: I mean, this is your first CD. But why did you pick, you know, the songs from two composers that are very difficult to perform? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Chopin and Brahms are not the easiest composers, you know, yeah. to you know to play the piano. Mm -hmm. Why did you pick the two of them? Are they your favorites? Uh, yeah, uh, of course, none of the <laughs> uh, the pieces are easy, okay. and uh, all these pieces like. Uh, the Chopin Impromptu, Grand Polonaise, and uh, First Sonata from Brahms. All these pieces, I started them in a very young age. Okay. Uh, most of them, I played them more than between five and ten years. Okay. So I, I think it's it's the time mm. to 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 record them mm -hmm. and make a documentation what I want to say with these pieces. Mm. Yeah. Okay. The, the, and from twos I played when I was in junior high school, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the pieces went with me to different competitions, and some of them are very, very nationally, and very, uh, I just feel the passion from Chopin, okay. and his love to his country. Okay. So I, I, I really enjoy to record them and bring them to the audience. Okay, Professor Lu, we understand that you're also very interested in playing and arranging 
you know, Taiwanese you know, folk music and also the local Taiwanese composition. Mm -hmm. I and mean, what was the reason? I mean, do you have a particular interest in those, you know, areas? Mm -hmm. Or is it because of, you know, the market has, you know, interest in this type of new arranged music? Mm -hmm. There are two reasons. One of them is as I played in, in Europe, okay. and one day someone just asked me, why do, a uh, German okay. people ask me, why do you play our music? Why don't you play your music? And I, I start to think about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why don't I play my music? Because it's, uh, it's a big benefit. Yes. And if a Taiwanese plays Taiwanese music, it's just, it's just good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> just like Poland, plays Polish music and German okay. plays German music. All right. Yeah. So how long have you been doing this? Well, I, I, since I think two, two or three years, okay. I always try to put some Taiwanese music in my uh, yeah, concert program. Yes. Maybe folk songs arrangement, maybe original uh, Taiwanese music. Mm -hmm. I, I hope it could be about one fourth or one third in my whole program. Okay. Yeah. Was it difficult, I mean, to arrange the local folk music you know, to be rearranged and to be performed in a complete new composition. Was it difficult? I, Was the process? I, I think it's interesting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, most of the folks' music are short. Okay. Maybe 20 seconds. All right. Or 40 seconds. All right. So it's definitely too short for mm. a concert piece. So we have to make it longer, maybe two, three, four, five minutes, or even longer. And that's mm -hmm. the most difficult part mm -hmm. at arranging Taiwanese folk songs. All right. But uh, I started this work since I was a child. Mm -hmm. uh, as I studied in Guting Music Elementary School, mm -hmm. uh, I have some classmates which just like to play between the classes uh, during the pause, and we just really playing the piano, not not doing some ex piano exercises, no. but playing something which the teacher didn't give me. Okay. And those pieces are things like MacGyver's uh, theme okay. or Ninja Turtle, what we hear uh, every day in the television or on the street. And we try to put all these music on the piano and, and it's cool. a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I, I do this when I was a child and I do it consistently. Mm -hmm. uh, afterwards, as I went to Austria, I know some uh, diplomats. Mm -hmm. And they knew that I'm a pianist, so they invite me to some uh, Taiwanese uh, festivals to okay. play for the Taiwanese abroad. All right. Uh, okay, and the song must, must be Taiwanese song. Okay. So I, I select uh, Wang Chun from Whispering Hope. Mm. Yep. All right. Okay, I play that. And it was amazing because mm -hmm. at that concert, okay. in the audience, there are two groups groups of people which okay. has totally different political uh, uh, orientations. Yeah, um, orientations. Okay. And, um, so, so they, they don't feel, they are not so fond with each other. No. No, okay. not at all. All right. Okay, so I played this Whispering Hope and after that I saw everyone's face. They have the same smile and it seems for me that maybe there's not no 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 big problem which can be slow under the music mm -hmm. and you can feel the air is suddenly soft and mm -hmm. and happy and I, I can hardly yes. describe that All right. and of course the applause was, was very loud mm -hmm. and it was so loud because um, i know mm -hmm. if i play good how the applause will be mm -hmm. but it was an applause that I have never heard. I think this music mm -hmm. really touched their heart. Exactly. So from that on, I started to come uh, rearrange more and more Taiwanese folk songs, and I and I try to put them in my concert program. All right. Yeah. And when you play overseas, that, Professor Lu, we also understand that you not only perform in front of the Taiwanese overseas communities but also in, you know, with the local you know, people in America, in parts of Asia, and also in Europe. Mm -hmm. What was their reaction you know, mm -hmm. to you know, your newly rearranged Taiwanese folk music? Mm -hmm. uh, were they receptive? Did they welcome? 
or other than the you know the German audience you know person that told you, why don't you play some music from your native Taiwan? Mm -hmm. uh, what was the general response from people in the audience? If I can, I always explain what I'm playing, okay. especially the, the the text. Okay. So the audience might know recognize better what's going on with all these pieces. These, exactly. these are not only melodies and tones. No, they are um, stories. Behind. Yeah, there are stories behind and mm. maybe stories behind stories or okay. the, uh, a complicated background, something like that. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, A Whispering Hope is the most popular piece. Mm -hmm. Wherever I played, okay. all the Taiwanese community are happy. It's just kind okay. of underground national anthem. Exactly. And uh, the song of Four Seasons, mm -hmm. Si Ji Hong. I, I feel the Europe people like that very much. Okay. I, maybe it's because I put some Hungary and Gypsy styles mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. that arrangement, so they feel really familiar with that music. Okay, mm -hmm. and let's talk about another thing that you did back in September of 2014, which is that you had a book published, mm -hmm. and the book was entitled Wang Chunfeng Si Ji Hong, Lu Yi Zhi De, this Taiwan Minyao Gaibian Qu. And tell us a little bit about the book project, and what was the intention, the reason for you to launch the book? I think it's it's. It's the same thing. Oh, I right. arranged my Taiwanese Music. pieces, okay. and someday uh, uh, a publisher, and also she's a, a con she, she's a concert agent. Okay. So she just asked me, "Do you want to publish that?" I said, mm -hmm. "Of course," and it began this uh, process. process. Not mm -hmm. only playing, but mm -hmm. also publishing. Okay. And my newest pub publication would be uh, T O O. And Tommy Alan Kegang. It's the dark sky and the, uh, the grasshopper cheating the rooster. Okay, and, and that will come out later this year. Well, it's already uh, uh, published available. in May. Oh, okay. In May. Yes, oh, okay. May. Good. All right. Yeah. And uh, let me ask you: all these different work that you do, how do you balance the different responsibilities that you have? You need, you know, teach. You know, you need to you know go overseas occasionally for performances. Uh, you may occasionally go write a book and do a CD. How do you balance? I, I really appreciate <laughs> my boss. He's very tolerant. Good. Uh, but I, I also think, as a teacher, it's yeah, right. always very good if the teacher can play what he's saying. Okay. Um, yeah, at the beginning of my teaching life, uh -huh. I, I don't have so much word to describe what I want. Right. So I just say something and I play. All right. Uh, of course, now I can speak much better. Yeah, compliments. Yeah, one but my with the other. yeah yeah, but my students always tell me it's right. good to have a teacher who can play All and right. they can understand. Yeah, you set the example for them, and that is a very important thing in terms yeah. of teaching yeah, 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 yeah. in Taiwan. Yeah. So, Lu, we understand that you've been very busy. You know, in addition to all the different things that we discussed that you were doing, that you also have a very crazy plan called the right piano mm -hmm. r-i-d-e right piano yeah can you tell us what's so crazy about the plan and what the plan is all about uh, three of us are musicians and one right. of us is designer okay uh we we feel that the taiwanese uh classical music mark well it's developing but mm -hmm. it's not active enough mm -hmm. okay. so we, we are just thinking what could be the problem. All right. And uh, then we find out maybe uh, classical music is a good thing. Okay. But there are many obstructions between the audience and the performer. Okay. For example, concert hall is a very good place to enjoy the music, of course. But uh, sometimes there are some ideologies like what will happen if I do something wrong in a concert hall. Maybe I wear the wrong clothes. Okay. Maybe I clap at the wrong time. time. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, I don't have money to get in. Maybe I can't understand what's going on with that music. Okay. So I feel really uncomfortable there. Right. And maybe this and that. So uh, we, we are just thinking, yeah, if the music is such a good thing, how about we just bring the music to your home? in front of you.
Okay. And there are so many people which who are not available to come into the concert hall,、oh, no. like elder people, maybe、uh, people who is really poor.、Mm-hmm. They 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 don't even have. They can't afford. They it. yeah、yes. they 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 don't have this money to have、mm-hmm. this enjoyment. Okay. So we we think okay. So、mm-hmm. let's do it.、Uh, mm-hmm. One of our members is a crazy motorbike rider. Okay. He likes motorbike, and we we just have the idea. Let's pull the piano with a motorbike. So we found a trunk. We put the piano on the trunk, and we let the motorbike to pull the trunk. Really. So we just go through Taiwan、mm-hmm. with this trunk. All right. In two times. One of one time is the east coast and one time is the west coast. All right.、Uh, and we we think it might be good if we play for someone who is not available to go into the concert hall to、of、listen、course. to the music.、Mm-hmm. So we go to some places, maybe orphan house,、okay. maybe、uh, yeah, maybe for old people who is not that good at、uh, mm-hmm. uh, going here and there.、Right. Yeah. So. Yeah,、uh, we we wish to tell our audience,、mm-hmm. especially the young audience. Maybe they are、uh, socially vulnerable groups. Yes. But through this act, this activity, we want to tell them, okay, if I if I play with a violin or a flute,、okay. it's easy to bring my instrument to go everywhere. Yes. But if today I bring a piano. It's something quite difficult and quite crazy. Yes, it's just like a dream. Everyone might have a dream, but maybe this and there they give it up. And I, we want to tell them, please don't give it up. It's just like us. We want to do it, and we really did a crazy thing.、Right. And if we can, you also will can. Well,、yeah. I mean, to you know these children and also the disadvantaged groups, you know that you play the you know the piano, the music, classical music in front of them. What was their reaction? You know, were they?、Uh, of, of course, I would imagine that they were very happy. But were they, you know, feeling like this is something that you know some of the children may want to pursue in the future?、Mm-hmm. They may also want to study piano. They may also want to know more about classical music.、Mm-hmm. You know, what was the overall reaction that you got? Okay, first of all, it's not only a concert.、All、it's、right. an encouragement.、Mm-hmm. We want to、Good. to、okay. to bring them our thought. Okay. Uh, um,、mm-hmm. I think、mm-hmm. they are happy. Okay. Uh, not because the music is good. Okay. Because we we really prepare the right music for them.、Okay. We have three or four different programs. And、for we, example, what are some of the different programs that you have?、Um, uh-huh. It depends from for the、uh, from the audience. Of course, if we have an older audience,、uh-huh. we will play more old songs,、right. and then maybe between we will put one or two classical music inside. Yeah, if the audience is children,、okay. and we will play more、uh, cartoon songs or、uh, yeah something、okay. like that. What what they understand,、okay. and we we want to <coughs> build relationship. Okay. And、uh, through the music, we can send our message out. Good. Yeah, that's the point. All right. And but let me ask you:、mm-hmm. when you travel to the remote areas in Taiwan, both along the east coast and the west coast,、uh, what were some of the difficulties that you had in terms of arranging, you know, visits to the different orphanage, or is it because? Uh, you have problems meeting the, you know, the people, the groups that you really want to do this program with. What were some of the difficulties?、Uh, because it's a really crazy program. Yeah. Most、mm. of the people don't believe us. Okay. <laughs> All right. They don't. A lot of doubters. Yes.、Mm. We we called. All right. To many institution.、Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe fifty percent accept us. Fifty percent not. Say no. Okay. Yeah. Okay.、Uh, maybe after we. Did、mm-hmm. this round tour, and okay, and someone said, "Oh, it's good.、Uh, if you want support, you can come to come to us." Yeah, I, I think we we just have to go for it first and、mm-hmm. let the people know what we are. We are serious,、mm-hmm. and then the people, the, the, the yeah, they will support. Yeah, yeah, they will be convinced. Yeah,、right. yeah, yeah. But let me ask you: Were there ever moments when people turn you down? Then the four members of the group will just say, "Oh, forget it. You know, people don't." 
or welcome us, they don't like us, then we don't do this anymore. Were there ever moments like this within the group? No, because we, our, our, our thought is so mm -hmm. strong. Right. If this way is blocked, okay. we go for another way. Right. We just want to do a tour and, yeah, for the people here and right. also for us. All right. Yeah. We believe we can do it, and we will do it. Yeah, you've done it. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and Professor Lu, you have been doing this program for some years, and now I have learned the program Ride Piano mm -hmm. has now been suspended mm -hmm. because it ran out of money. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. And so your friends are now selling uh, braised Taiwanese snacks, <laughs> and you are now teaching mm -hmm, at the mm -hmm. National Taiwan University yeah, yeah. Uh, for the arts, of mm -hmm, the art. Mm -hmm. And uh, what were the plans for the future? Do you plan to restart the program you know, once you have saved enough money? What, what, what's the plan? I think we are open for all the possibilities. Uh, okay. And maybe in this way or okay. in another way. Right. But the spirit of right piano will continue. All right. Yeah. But then along the way, when you're doing the program, mm -hmm. what were some of the you know sociological observations that you were able to discover? For example, are people in the remote areas more you know reluctant and more reserved in terms of you know uh, getting their exposure to classical music because this is something. You know, imported. This is something foreign, foreign country. This is not something they're familiar with. Uh, you know, what was the, you know, the general response that you picked up? Uh, maybe it happens, but okay. uh, sometimes it do happens. Okay. But we, we have to change okay. our program proportion immediately. The program isn't fixed. Okay. So if we find out maybe they are not that interested in this and that program, mm -hmm. and maybe the moderator right. will say, okay, let's play something, and All we right. just go. All right. yeah, so. Do you ever, you know, you and your partners, your, you know, other members of the group, ever thought about trying to raise some private funding from corporations or even from government to continue doing this ride piano program? Mm -hmm. We did it in Flying V. Okay. It's a okay. yeah, fundraising program. All right. Yeah, but we failed. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Why? You know, I mean, some of the corporations were not able to fund you because they don't believe in your program. What, what was the reason? Um, it's it's an online funding. Oh, okay. Yeah, for public. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's it's hard to say why. Okay. But. I think it will be different if we do it again. All right. Yeah. Uh, um, some of the reasons are at that moment, and of course we are fresh, mm -hmm. and many things could be done better. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And now uh -huh. we already did something. If we found raising some, do a fundraising, I think uh, it will be more funding. easier. Yes. Yeah. Get of more course. funding, it will be easier. Okay. So yeah. do you plan maybe when the funding gets here? That you could start, you know, restart the program within a year. Uh, I don't know, but uh, we we will discuss about oh, it. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, Certainly, yeah. keeping mm -hmm. my fingers crossed. Hopefully, yeah. you get the funding that you need, yeah. so such a meaningful program can be continued. Mm -hmm. Mr. Liu, we understand that uh, uh, since coming back to Taiwan, you have done quite a bit. You know, released uh, the CDs that you have mentioned, and also wrote, you know, wrote, you know, two books, mm -hmm. and also been teaching and also did a very you know, meaningful program called Ride the Piano. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but we also understand that there were some occasional setbacks. Mm -hmm. you know, for example, it's not so easy, despite the fact that you have won so many international competitions in piano, that it wasn't so easy for you, you, know, for you to get a permanent teaching job in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us that story? Please. At the end period of mm -hmm. my military service, I start to apply for schools and exactly. send my resume to mm -hmm. to uh, all the universities north from Xinzhou and all the music high schools mm -hmm. in tai Taipei. All right. Okay. Uh, I have to say there are about 22 music universities 
and about 11 of them mm -hmm. are north from Shinju. Okay. So I sent them out and I only got one reply from a music high school. Okay. And one reply is of course not enough for living in Taipei. It's no. impossible. Yes. So I got nervous. Yes. So <laughs> I sent to all the universities in Taiwan and uh, maybe hope that they will give me a position or in anywhere. Mm -hmm. And all the music high schools north from Taichung. Mm. Yeah. Um, and there's still no answer. Really? Okay, after that I have this ride piano project, so I go outside with my ride piano team. And during the ride okay. in August, I slowly got some phone call. Uh, if you do you want to come and and end. So the, the whole process takes about a half year. Really? And that half year was really nervous. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, I can imagine. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, after now, you know, getting the position at the National Taiwan University of the Arts, mm -hmm. you know, did you think, you know, the education, you know, environment, music educational environment in Taiwan has now been more, you know, mature? Uh, than what you remember some 15, 20 years ago? Or is it the environment still very much enclosed you know, within itself? I think it's getting better and better because okay. um, if you think the music history in Europe, mm -hmm. it's that long. Okay. <laughs> but yes. in Taiwan, the, the beginning of the Western music comes from the missionary. So it's not that long no. as, the Euro as Europe. European condition. So yes. it takes generation to of get course. better and better. All right. And I, I, I think we are in a good direction. All right. But in, in the other thing, I, I feel the big difference between the Taiwanese music education mm -hmm. and the Europe music education is mm -hmm. in Taiwan, we like exam very much. Yes. Yeah. To force the student <laughs> to practice. And I, I don't think it's a, a, a good thing. Uh -huh. yeah. During my study, uh -huh. in Europe. Uh -huh. we, I only have two big exams in six years okay. in my university mm. and master study. Okay. And for my concert exam, it was just, it was just three or four mm -hmm. in two years. Okay. And all of them are these uh, degree exams, not semester or every month or, or something. Okay. And uh, the people there, they, they learn actively, and I feel that's the big difference Be okay. because they know what they want to do. Okay. And maybe it's just because we have too much exams and they, they just follow the path which is already built. Okay. So they, they don't really consider what they want to do. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Maybe it could be somehow <laughs> yes. better. Yeah. All right. But yeah. I think a lot of people who are watching our program, if they have young children mm -hmm. who are interested in learning piano, mm -hmm. for example, I think the common problem that they have in Taiwan is that kids really, unless you, you know, apply some pressure, the kids really you know, don't want to learn piano on their own. You know, they don't want to spend the time practicing. They don't want to spend the time going to, you know, piano lessons in addition to the regular curriculum. Mm -hmm. Do you sense that among the younger students in Taiwan? Are they now more motivated? Uh, or is it that they're still not sure if they want to learn about music, about piano, and they're only doing this for their parents? What, what is your view? I, I think maybe the the whole environment is not that optimistic. Okay. So they, they, they are not that sure what will happen if I work so hard. Mm -hmm. I still get a bad salary and uh, yeah, they, they don't... I can't support myself. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So they, they are, maybe they are mm -hmm. not so hopeful for okay. their future. Mm -hmm. But I, I think some something is a... The, the character of a human being mm -hmm. is very important. Are you serious in your job, what you really want to do? Okay. Uh, and it means a lot for me. Maybe not in music, okay. but if, if you are serious and you like your job, and I think something will come out. All right. Yeah. All right. And uh, let me ask you, that you know, goes to my next question, which is 
how big or how mature do you think Taiwan's market is for classical music? You know, for example, if a person goes through, you know, music department in the university, and get a degree and uh, has, you know, competent knowledge about you know, a piano or another instrument, can they really find the market that's economic support for them to continue on such a career path? The music is for all people. So I think, yeah, we can have a good education system. Okay. We can try to build a good education system. Mm -hmm. But if you want to live as a concert pianist, you have to see big and wide. All right. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. All right. And Professor Liu, we know that you have been a music student. All right. And now you are a you know, professor. Mm -hmm. And then also you also a, a concert pianist. And you occasionally go into a recording studio and become a recording artist. Of all the different roles that you have played in your life, you know, in your career so far, which one did you like the best and why? Oh, it's so hard to say. <laughs> because every, every, every work had its mm -hmm. attraction. OK. Yeah. As a concert pianist, when I'm on the stage, I feel Mm -hmm. really excited because yes. I only have one chance. Mm -hmm. If I fail, I fail. There's no second time. And if I do a good job, I'm really happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as a teacher, I enjoy to talk with my students to share something. And okay. if I saw their development, mm -hmm. improvement, and I, if I know I, I can give what they want, right. I feel that I'm really worthful. All right. uh, As for, a recording artist? For recording, I think recording and uh, publishing scores, it belongs to the concert career. Yeah, uh, we cannot separate them. No. If, if we play a lot of concert, the recording mm -hmm. will go good. All right. we play t if we play two, dead, two less, okay. um, no one will buy that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's, it's also good documentation for the artist to see, oh, what did I did five years, ten years before? Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. I play so good, or oh, I play so bad. Okay. Yeah. All right. Always room for improvement. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, also, let me ask you, uh, what would be some of the plans that you have for you and maybe for your you know, fellow you know, uh, co-members in the group mm -hmm. and also for your students in the future? Mm -hmm. Well, what are some of the things that you would like to do? And what are some of the things that you would like to continue doing in the future? Mm -hmm. I, I have a dream. I would like to play in 50 different cities in the world. Okay. And uh, how now, many have you done? Now I have about 28, something right. like that. So I have... More than halfway there. Yes. All right. So I hope I can do this in the next five years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm okay. going for it. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, out of the 28 cities that you have played in, Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the cities that you remember the, you know, the most? And what were some of the stories, maybe when you were on stage performing, that you can share with us? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, I was in <laughs> Romania, okay. in Arad. It's a, a, a small city right. just beside Hungary. At that time, I lived in, in Vienna, so I traveled to Arad mm -hmm. with a night bus. Oh, okay. So I have to count, uh, okay, like uh, 4 o'clock in the morning, I will mm -hmm. arrive Ara. So I set my alarm and I sleep on the bus. Okay. <laughs> and somehow at 3 o'clock, the driver called Arad, Arad, and I, I thought, uh, maybe he's calling me. And I found out, okay, we already passed Arad. Oh, really? Yeah, the bus drives too fast. And it was even one hour earlier in the next city. Oh, okay. And the next city is 50 kilometers uh, farther than uh, Arad. Arad. So I, mm. I have no choice. I have to get off, uh, get mm. off of the bus, okay. hit my uh, luggage. Okay. And it was, I don't know, 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And the only light was an ATM on the street <laughs> okay. and two taxis standing there. So I, I have to go to Arad. In Romania, they, they, they rather speak English. So mm -hmm. I go to one taxi driver and I just say, Arad. And how much? Uh -huh. And he said 200 euros. And I think I don't like this price. It's 
I, I don't know expensive. how much, but I, okay. I don't like this price. Maybe right. it should be like this price. Okay. So why not? Let me ask the second driver. Okay. So I go to the second driver mm -hmm. and ask, I want to go to Arad. How much is it? Okay. And he said 50. And of course, <laughs> I go to that. Yes. There's a huge difference. Uh -huh. and, uh, yeah. And I arrive Arad at five o'clock, something like that. Okay. Yeah. And uh, of all the audience reactions that you have received, mm -hmm. which ones that move you the most? That was most touching. You know, people, of course, you know, occasionally give you a standing ovation. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, I played in Japan okay. several times okay. uh, in competitions and also concerts. Okay. And some of the Japanese people knew me. Okay. One time before I play, I, I was just mm -hmm. going around the concert hall and someone saw me and recognized me. And an old lady, uh -huh. she gave me a, a Meiji chocolate. Oh, okay. She couldn't speak well. English, uh, English. Yes. yes. She just gave me that, and uh, yeah, very uh, yeah, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, all the best for tonight. And this this chocolate mm -hmm. is so so meaningful for me because the musicians, a lot of musicians, eat chocolate yeah, before right a concert. Before concert. Yeah. Yes. So to get energy and mm -hmm. yeah. So oh, mm -hmm. okay, it's not only a chocolate, it's a blessing. Uh, maybe if we have the opportunity to have you back on the program, yeah. we will also prepare some chocolates oh, for thank you. you. <laughs> thank you very much. Professor Liu, it's certainly been a pleasure to have you on the program today. want to wish you all the best in your future personal and professional endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much for watching our program today. I'll see you next time on Macroview Television. Thank you.